Welcome to GADEPS. Uh, so today we have uh, 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 Georgi Vittorio from IMPA, who is going to talk about um, the formal principle for curved and projective uh, surfaces. So, George. Thank you, Hussein, for the invitation. Um, I, I apologize for, for talking some, about something that is already two years old, I think. But uh, I guess that since the theme of the of this seminar is the periods, I, I, it would be better to, to speak about something that has at least some vague relation with, with that. So that's why I chose to talk about this joint work uh, with uh, Olivier Ton. Okay, so what's this formal principle? It's a concept, I think, introduced by Grauert. And uh, it's about compact subvarieties of uh, complex varieties. So we take a pair of a complex variety X and a compact subvariety Y. And we say that this pair satisfies the formal principle if for any other pair, such that the formal completion of X along Y and the formal completion of X prime along Y prime are formally equivalent, then these germs are biolomorphic. So let me just draw a picture, perhaps it's... So I'm looking to uh, pairs of varieties, Y prime and X prime, and I'm assuming that there is some that the infinitesimal neighborhood or the formal neighborhood of y in x is formally equivalent to the formal neighborhood of y prime in x prime so this is uh, formally isomorphic here so uh, george to understand the context uh, everything is non-singular and uh, use, consider you consider only... the... I'm just stating the, 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 the general situation. You, can, you don't uh, need to ask anything. Perhaps even compactness can be dropped, but of course, I'm going to discuss smooth curves on smooth surface in a, in a moment. But the concept makes sense for, uh, for complex varieties. You don't need to ask irreducibility. You don't need to ask anything. The definitions make sense. So this is just a definition. And uh, well, uh, going back to the definitions, so uh, you may uh, ask a stronger question. So you have a formal equivalence uh, between two formal neighborhoods. The question is whether this formal equivalence actually converges. Of or, course, yeah. you, or you may ask a more relaxed question. So if this a formal conjugacy is non-unique, so you have one formal conjugacy that uh, may be divergent, but still then you can guarantee that there is another uh, which converges. Yeah, and, and also there, there are a lot of variants. You can also ask if given one formal conjugacy, can we find a convergent conjugacy that approximates the formal conjugacy up to a certain order. So there, there are a lot of variants and all of them have been studied. But I, I, I just stick to this simplest def definition. That I just want to say that the existence of a formal conjugacy implies the existence of a convergent conjugacy and then when we, this happens, this, we say that the pair x, y satisfies the formal principle. Meaning for any, yeah, so that's what's written. Okay. Very good. So uh, as I said, uh, the, the definition makes sense in a, uh, in a very general setting, but I will stick to the case of smooth curves on smooth surfaces. So for me, X will be a smooth surface of dimension two, and Y will be a smooth irreducible curve contained in X, okay? So uh, in this case, uh, when the self-intersection of Y in X is different from zero, then X, Y satisfies the formal principle. 
and it satisfies, uh, depending on the sign of the self-intersections, it satisfies the formal principle for different reasons. So the case where y square is negative, so here the most basic example is just the blow up of a point, you can imagine that we have a system of neighborhoods of y that are good approximations of convex, right? Just like a point has a neighborhood by balls in C2, and when we blow up, these balls will, would be good approximations of convex sets. And we have these uh, neighborhoods, which are pseudo-convex. Please connect to your Wi-Fi network. You can find setup instructions in the help section of your Alexa app. Sorry about that. And uh, so, this was a result proved by Gaurat, right? That this curves with negative self-intersection admits pseudo-convex neighborhoods. And uh, since the, we have this pseudo-convex neighborhoods, we have lots and lots of holomorphic functions. And uh, in the case where y square is positive, so here we, have, we are in the opposite setting, the neighborhoods are not lo no longer convex or pseudo-convex, but are pseudo-concave. And uh, here, uh, the, the canonical example that you could think is a line on P2. So in both cases, the formal principle satisfied. And uh, essentially, in the first case, the reason is the abundance of holomorphic functions. And the technique used to prove the formal principle is arcing approximation. This is essentially equivalent to Grauer's contractability criterion, because you can, the formal conjugacy would give a formal conjugacy of the singularity that appears when we contract to Y, and we can apply arcing approximation theorem to produce a convergent conjugacy from uh, a, a formal one. And while in the case of positive self-intersection, the, the reason is completely different. It's not that we have many holomorphic functions, but we have very few meromorphic functions or even pro formal meromorphic functions. And here we are in a situation alluded by, to, alluded by Sergei, where the convergence is automatic. We don't need to approximate anything. We just have a convergent point. OK? And uh, when the square is 0, the situation is much more complicated. So there is one case where things are still quite simple. It's when this uh, curve Y is a fiber of a vibration. So this has nothing to do with dimension two. This holds in a very in great generality. But in our situations, we have this. So if we have Y is a fiber of a vibration to a disk, then uh, the pair still satisfies the formal principle. And essentially, this is, again, an application of arcing approximation. So arcing approximation can always be applied when we are able to localize the problem. And here, the localization is by identifying x with a germ of curve in the dual D space, the space that parameterizes the variety. Since we have a vibration, we can produce that. But anyway, if we drop this assumption uh, or that Y is fiber of a vibration, I think, oh, here let me just, I, I, I'm going to mention, I already mentioned at least twice arcing approximation, and I'm going to mention a lot of times arcing approximation. So for those that doesn't remember or doesn't know what arcing approximation is, let me just recall it very quickly. So the situation is the following. We have a system of analytic equations, uh, f, x, y. So I have to think that this f has, is a bunch of uh, analytic equations in two sets of variables, x and y. And we assume that we have some formal solution to this set of uh, analytic equations. Then uh, this set of solutions can be, this solution can be uh, approximated up to arbitrary order by a convergent solution. So this is the RT approximation that I'm going, I'm talking about. Okay. 
anyway so back to our problem so this problem on on the for curves with zero self intersection i think it was arnold the first to observe that uh, the formal principle does not necessarily hold in the situation and his example was beginning with an elliptic curve and a representation on this c0 from this you can construct a kind of tubular neighborhood of e endowed with affiliation which will have uh, these maps as monodromy and by by choosing a map which is formally linear about linearizable but non-linearizable non-analytically linearizable uh, he uh, was able to construct a pair x y which does not satisfy this formal principle okay and more recently uh in 2018, uh, uh, Frank Lohey, Olivier Ton, and Frédéric Touzé uh, showed that uh, in the same setup, but now considering a representation tangent to the identity, here you had it was not tangent to identity, so which is still does not satisfy the formal principle. And uh, here the situation, they give an even more detailed description, they prove that, that for fixed formal type, there are infinite dimensional analytic moduli. So we have an infinite dimensional family of formally equivalent neighborhoods of elliptic curve, which are not analytically. So, George, is it a more or less one-to-one -one translation of the theory of a Carl Veronian, uh, which is somehow uh, suspended? So the Carl Veronian theory gives you complete information about the um, pair of uh, maps. Uh, In the case of the elliptic curve, curve, yes. In the case of elliptic curve, yes, because the existence of uh, transverse vibrations is, is almost automatic. But in general, no. Ah, so uh, there are global uh, obstructions that have to be worked uh, around. Yes, yes. But yeah, I'm I'm not expert on on, on these results. But uh, yeah, I, there there are extra complications. But you are right. Well, uh, a big part of it reduces to the study of this, the construction of these foliations, and the study of their invariance. The most important is perhaps the holonomy. But let me just point out here that in Arnold's example, NY, the normal bundle of Y, was not torsion. But in here, in the, the examples of Lohe, Ton, and Tuze, the normal bundle of Y is trivial. Okay? So this summarizes the situation for the formal principle in dimension two. Self-intersection different from zero, it always holds. And self-intersection equal to zero, it seems to be uh, hard to have a result since we have counterexamples when NY is not torsion and when, when NY is trivial. And it's easy to produce examples when NY torsion from non-trivial from, from this one. Very good. So I want to study a slightly different version of this problem. So now I'm going to assume that my curve before the situation was local, right? Or at least semi-local, if you want. The curve Y was compact, so the curve Y was projective, but X was just a germ. Now I want to assume that X is projective. So I want to, to look at pairs, Y, and but now X big, really big, so X projective. And I want to compare two pairs like that, x prime, y prime, but that coincide only along a formal neighborhood of y. I want to assume that these two things coincide. I want to be able to, to give some positive results, right? So. I'm going to say that a pair satisfies the formal principle if X is projective. And uh, for any other prayer with X prime projective and with formal completion isomorphic, formally isomorphic, 
then the germ of x along y is biolomorphic to the germ of y prime of our x prime along y prime okay and, and I, will, I will say even more i will say that the, that they satisfy the birational formal principle if this the, if the existence of, of this formal conjugacy implies the existence of a birational map between x and x prime sending uh, this y formal neighborhood of y by regularly in a formal neighborhood of y prime okay there was a question or a comment no i just wanted to, to ask exactly exactly this so you still despite the global a projective settings you a, uh, do not uh, constrain yourselves by local neighborhoods of the uh, of the curve but indeed uh, ask about the global conclusion that uh, the formal uh, neighborhoods uh, isomorphism extends to a birational uh, yes. isomorphism of the ambient surfaces exactly do you, see, do you see it's of course to always have to always hope for this is completely pointless right because uh, 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 the, uh, excuse me uh, just uh, one second of uh, reflection so uh, the uh, group of birational uh, equivalences is very uh, how to say thin very uh, small uh, but uh, if you consider formal neighborhoods and their equivalences then you have a much more freedom so in some sense you should expect that uh, the um, the problem is solvable only exceptionally rarely right Ex of course yeah so to have a uh, concrete examples in the in mind just remember that uh any p1 this move p1 with self intersection minus one are locally equivalent but i can just take any two surface as different as you want blow up points in these two surfaces and i'm going to have two pairs of uh, surface and curve with a formal equivalence even a convergent equivalence but the surface have no reason to be birationally equivalent or have any relation between them whatsoever Okay, but anyway, the point is that I have a result with that. So, uh, with this definition, so the point is that now I'm, I want to look exactly the case where uh, the the situation is completely out, uh, not well understood for germs. So I want to study curves with zero self intersection. Unfortunately, I, I don't have a general result for curves with zero self-intersection, but I do have a result. We do have a result for curves with no trivial normal bundles. So that's my assumption. My assumption is any C is trivial. Okay, so of course, the most basic example of a curve with trivial normal bundle is a fiber of a vibration, right? And in that case, we do have the Hishovit principle, the, the formal principle does hold thanks to the result of Hishovit, even in the local situation. But if we are not in this situation, we know that the formal principle does not hold in general. This is the examples of Lohe, Ton, and Tuze. So, but let's assume that we are in this global setting, S is a smooth projective curve, and I have this. And let's assume that C is not a fiber of a vibration. Then what I'm claiming is that this pair SC satisfies the birational formal principle. So in the case of trivial normal bundle, I do have any formal equivalence between two germs, two formal neighborhoods of curves inside projective surface is automatically a birational equivalent. And as you are going to see from the proof, uh, uh, our proof, of course, will prove uh, immediately the conversion. So give any uh, formal equivalence in this setting, I'm going to extend to a birational map, this formal equivalence. 
because the, the reflection of Sergei, Sergei says that it would be very difficult to do anything different, right? Since they have this uh, very small group of birational transformation, this very large group, or potentially very large group of uh, formal equivalences. I mean, uh, uh, George, is this uh, this kind of result is also true in a very positive uh, self intersection case, or it is just typical? Yeah, that's that's Roward. Not very positive. Positive. Uh, okay. okay. Period. It's true. That's Grauert Cornichot. Ah, okay. Well, it has automatic equivalence, but as you're going to see, then it's not hard to prove that it's birational equivalence. So, uh, so the result gives the birationality then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, they not, do not state like that, but that's the easy part. Any other questions? So the ingredients of this, the proofs are uh, essentially have three, three ingredients. So one of them, no surprise, it's RT approximation. And the other two are um, with a theory that I'm going to briefly review. And from with the theory and bas basic considerations with Hodge theory, I'm going to produce a general geometric structure attached to the R neighborhood. So, some sense, this is the, the, the existence of this uh, geometric structure is what will allow us to apply arcing approximation. Because to apply arcing approximation, we have to transform our same local problem into a local problem. And we have to present our convergence morphism or our conjugation morphism as a solution to a local problem, to a local system of equations, and use RT approximation to show that it converts. Okay. So let me start saying a bit about this weather theory. So this uh, weather theory is something about a uh, smooth hypersurface on a complex manifold U. So manifold, when I say manifold, I mean smooth, and so here is a smooth hypersurface. And I'm assuming that uh, the normal bundle is topologically torsion. And now uh, also, it's about germs of surfaces, uh, about germ of manifolds containing a given surface, so I can always restrict uh, U and assume that both U and Y have the same homotopy type. We are not going to work with any smooth hypersurface. We are going to work with compact Keller manifolds, compact, compact Keller hypersurface. Why compact Keller is relevant? Because in this situation, topologically torsion, Hodge theory implies that uh, NY, the normal bundle, admits a unique flat unitary connection. So the normal bundle can be seen as a suspension of a representation on S1. And since U and Y have the same homotopy type, we can extend the normal bundle as a flat unitary bundle on U. So I have a natural extension of the normal bundle of Y, essentially coming from Hodge theory, if you want. But of course, we have another possible extension of the normal bundle. We can always write the normal bundle of, of Y, so U, Y to two i so we have these two ex possible extensions and we can look at the, the difference and the type the way the type of y is defined as follows we say that it's plus infinity if this line bundle is isomorphic to the trivial bundle on arbitrary infinitesimal neighborhoods of y so this is the elf And otherwise, we say that this type is K if the restriction to the LF neighborhood, L smaller than K, is trivial, but to the Kth neighborhood is no longer trivial. Okay. 
I understand, as far as I understand, Weda introduced this uh, start, start his investigations trying to clarify Arnold's example. And when the type K, we get for free uh, the cohomology class, which measures the non triviality, which will be something like in H1, Y idea of y to the power k over k minus one. So this is the way in the class. It's the thing which is mapped to the class of u restricted to i over k. And the point, the, 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 the remarkable thing, I think this is why I really enjoy, I really like this result. I think it's a really deep and remarkable statement is the following, let's do to Weda. Uh, if I have a curve with zero self-intersection, normal bundle, no assumption besides degree zero, and of finite Weda type, which means that this line bundle U is not trivial uh, in a formal completion, then C has a fundamental system of strictly pseudo-concave neighborhoods. So in some sense, I like to interpret this result as saying that the C square of the curve is epsilon positive. So positive, but smaller than any possible real number. Just to have idea that this is, uh, is a property that uh, curves of, self, of positive self-intersection have. And what, is, what I find, found, find really amazing of this result is that this result is not accessible by methods from algebraic geometry. So many of these results, when the curve has positive self-intersection, you prove things by uh, working on the formal completion and proving that the formal, the, the field of formal meromorphic functions along the curve C has a finite transcendence degree over uh, the base field. But in this case, that's not true. So if you just look formally, this is a mess. Formally, this uh, has infinite, the field of formal meromorphic functions along C has infinite transcendence degree and uh, everything from, from the usual method from algebraic geometry breaks. And I'm not saying that the proof is extremely difficult. No, the proof is, is very, uh, very simple indeed, but it's, it's real analysis, it's, uh, it's complex analysis. Okay. And from that, you can see that this curve C behaves very much like an ample or a curve of positive self-intersection. So let's assume that C is contained in a projective surface. This result has nothing to do with projectivity. It's just a local result. But let's assume that C is contained in S. And what happens is that uh, when I take out C, what remains is something which is holomorphically convex. And if you prefer, it's just a, a complex manifold, a complex surface that after the contraction of finitely many curves becomes a time space. Also, he, it satisfies a kind of uh, Lefschetz uh, hyperplane theorem, if you want. So the morph morphism uh, induced by the inclusion of C in S on a level of the first homology group is subjective, just like um, in, for, for curves of positive self-intersection, as Lefschet says. And every meromorphic function defined on the Euclidean, Euclidean neighborhood of C, Euclidean I mean just the usual topology, not the risk topology, extends to a global rational function. And more generally, if uh, E is a locally free sheave, then any meromorphic sections extend to a global rational section. And moreover, if we have a closed holomorphic one form defined on a neighborhood of C, then omega extends to a global holomorphic one form. From the previous result, it extends to a rational one form, but since uh, this curves here, this finitely many curves, the possible uh, set of poles, it has negative definite intersection matrix, this thing must be holomorphic everywhere. Okay, so it, in this case, you type less than infinity, it's very similar to uh, a curve of positive self-intersection. 
And so if I have a hypersurface, uh, you type people infinity plus normal bundle torsion, then Y is a fiber. So this is a result uh, by Weddell. So this is also Weddell. He states for curves on, on surface, but uh, his proof works in, in general. Uh, Georgia, John, one, one question. If I take a curve in P2 and make it blow up to get a self intersection zero curve, mm -hmm. is it something useful for uh, this class of curve that you are considering? or? What, what do you mean, something useful? It I mean, depends, I, it, can, it can be one of, one of these curves, for example, what that type of. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But it, U type can be infinity also. It depends. Okay. Okay, so this is one thing. So this is the way the theory. And so, uh, of course, from this result, we already see that in the case of the, our theorem, we have only to restrict to the case of U type of C smaller than infinity, because in the other case, we have a vibration and we have this result of Hishovitz that say the formal principle holds. So in this situation, uh, that's the situation that we are going to, to use. And we can, we are going to be able to explore all these things. As you may guess, this item three is what will be responsible for the extension of the conjugacy. Okay, so now uh, we are going to use basic hot theory. This a statement uh, relies on basic rod theory. So uh, here, let the D be advisable, but here I can just think that D is equal to C. And X is a surface, projective surface, if you want, or color surface. And um, assume, um, in our case, assume the existence of uh, a line bundle, for instance, the case that L, that is a torsion line bundle on, on X, topological torsion, I mean, and of positive integer k such that the OX KD restrict to D is just this L. So in our setting, we're going to apply this in a very simple situation. We're going to apply this when C uh, is a curve, uh, the normal bound L will be trivial, and OX C restricted to C will be just OC, will be trivial. And then the point is the following. Uh, we uh, show that either there exists a closed logarithmic one form with poles in D and coefficients in, in a torsion line bundle, or uh, we have a closed meromorphic one form with coefficients in L dual without residues and polar div divisor equal to KD. So that's the case we are going to to explore, because in this case, uh, when ny is trivial, is the case of um, is the case of a vibration. Anyway, so this is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I probably should have put this uh, simpler statement, but I put the more general version that appeared in the paper. I'm sorry about that, but it's a common generalization of several results. Results by Amon Neiman, who wrote, wrote a wonderful book about this way the theory and uh, by uh, some results that we proved from Claudon, together with Claudon, Lohey, and Tuzi. So this is, uh, I, I'm stating this, and we state in the paper and prove because we believe it's technically useful. But anyway, perhaps it's not the best choice for, the, for this presentation. But I will sketch the proof of it, and I will sketch the proof of it in the case that interests us. So, uh that's i mean when v is equal to y and the normal bundle is trivial and then case one is a vibration and case two is the existence of a closed rational one form with polar set equal to two y and no residues okay and how do we prove something like that the proof is really simple so let's Take to this case, D equal Y, the device and the normal bundle is trivial. And we take local equations for Y. 
And the idea is to uh, compare them. That's what WEDA does. Let's compare these local equations on the intersections. And so I can write something like that. Uh, it will differ by something which is equal to one. This one here is because the normal bundle is trivial. And uh, a multiple Rij of the defining equation. So this vanishes along the curve. And then we consider this uh, co-cycle, Aij equal to the one over Fi minus one over Fj. Okay, so uh, if we go back to the definition of that abstract definition that we gave of the way the class, this is very a concrete expression for it. So in this particular case, we can see the weather class as the restriction of a global cohomology class. So the weather class, so this is the normal bundle, which is trivial by assumption. Uh, and it's a restriction of, uh, and the restriction of a global cohomology class. So that's why, that's why that assumption that the line bundle L extended to something global, I want to, to, to be able to write that. Um, the, the way the class is the restriction of something global. And basically what theory tell us that the differential of this co-cycle is zero in H1 X omega one. And then we can just produce this, uh, this difference, write down the DAIJ as a difference of closed holomorphic one forms, if you want. And so this, we define F as the differential of one over Fi minus F alpha J. And that's it. So this is the one form that we are claiming the existence. Of course, this one form is not unique, right? If in the process I add a global holomorphic one form, it, it will have another form with the same properties. But uh, we can uh, use Bayes' Hodge theory again to uh, rigify our, our choices. And as just remember the theorem B saying that there exists a closed ratio one form on the surface with polar set equal to C. Important to understand that this this is a global result, right? It's it does not hold locally. There, this closed rational one form does not or closed meromorphic one form, if you want, does not exist in the local set. Hodge theory is playing a role here. And uh, in order to normalize, uh, we what we do we normalize in such a way that the periods of this form, or the integral along closed curves, it's not any period, but it's a, it's a period of an anti-holomorphic one form. So it lies in the Hodge decomposition. It does not lie in anywhere. It will lie in H1S omega S. And uh, once we fix uh, trivialization of the normal, we can take this period to be the weather class. And at the same time, since we took this guy here, we can choose a theta in H C omega one C such that theta bar is this period, is this is omega, the, the class or the, the representation given by omega. Remember that omega is meromorphic, is rational, but has no periods, has no residues. So the point is that this vector space, the vector space generated by theta n omega is the thought is a, a geometric structure canonically associated to uh, canonically associated to our, our our pair right and here is s I'm writing y but i don't know here is s And uh, since this, all the choice is made to normalize and to think uh, related to this weather class uh, is something which will be uh, preserved by any formal equivalence. So that's the key, key point. So we, from in the global setting, we produced uh, some vector space of dimension two of one forms, 
of closed one forms, which is preserved under uh, conjugation, on, which will be preserved under form of equivalence. And so uh, let me just sketch the proof of the theorem A. So from the way that type consideration, way that type plus infinity, this is the case of a vibration. And so we can apply results from Rishovitz. And if SC and S prime C are two pairs with completions formally equivalent, then I can take one formal equivalence. Since the U type, I am assuming that the U type is not infinity, we have these geometric structures and they must be sent to each other by means of the formal equivalence. And then we reduce uh, the problem to a very simple statement uh, about formal biolomorphism. Suppose that we have these things, sending pairs of convergent exact one forms satisfying these properties. Then phi is the restriction to C2 of a germ of biolomorphism. So, I mean, phi is convergent. And the proof of the convergence is a little bit funny because what we do is restrict a certain order approximate using arcing approximation theorem. And then after getting some convergence, we prove that uh, we kind of have some rigidity that these diffeomorphisms are determined by some finite jet. We don't have a lot of freedom because we have these two forms, which are not, not identically zero. So this is just an equal, right? So this. Okay, so that's how the proof goes. And uh, phi is convergent and we can use these results of, uh, of Ueda to extend uh, the thing to the whole, to the whole surface by, by rationally, as we would be able to do in the case of positive self-interception. And that's it. That's all I had to prepare for today. So okay. If you want to ask, ask questions or. Okay. Thank you. Uh, George, you are done, no? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And any question in the recorded session of the talk? So, Yunus, you can stop recording and then we go. I will.